In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to take footage that was shot at 30 frames per second and conform it to fit properly onto a 24 frames per second timeline. Now, we're not going to be using any tricks like slowing down the footage by 20%, which would yield an acceptable result if you're okay with the timing of the shot changing. We're going to actually conform it and fit it properly on that timeline. Now, so we're going to be using DaVinci Resolve, a specifically optical flow retiming and speed warp motion estimation. And these are not uh, light effects, these are quite GPU and CPU intensive, so this is a very sophisticated method of converting the 30 FPS to the 24 FPS. We're going to be allowing Resolve to analyze the motion of the frames and to generate frames that don't exist for a very believable end result, which you're seeing here. Uh, this tutorial is at 24 FPS so that you can see the end result. So the 30 FPS footage is going to look jittery, but the 24 FPS footage is actually uh, shown properly here. We're also going to use Real Smart Motion Blur, which will have the added effect of removing any sort of artifacts on that 30 FPS to 24 FPS conversion. Okay, so here's the clip here, and I'm going to right click it and show you in Media Info. It has been recorded at 29.97 FPS. That is the NTSC video frame rate. And I'm going to actually convert it down to 24 FPS, and we're going to use some sophisticated methods that are available in DaVinci Resolve. And we'll also use a plugin that will uh, treat the motion blur and make it quite believable as if you really did shoot it in 24 FPS. So I'm going to go and uh, just create a timeline here in DaVinci Resolve. Go to Format, change it to the NTSC film frame rate, so 23.976. And I'm just going to do a cinematic 1 or 2.35 aspect ratio, so 2708, 2.7K basically. I'm just going to drag this clip onto the timeline and I'm going to do a, a 1.33 zoom so that we can uh, get that zoomed in there and fill the frame and I think I'm going to go to about right here and cut it off so delete that and now you're going to see that uh, we'll just do a little bit of animation real quick first so let's go do this and then once we get to about right here I think I think this is fine. I'm going to animate the position so that we can reveal this. Alright, so as you can see, when I play back this 30 FPS footage on the 24 FPS timeline, look at the left hand corner of that truck there, see how it's jittering. Uh, and you can see here, uh, it, it just doesn't look good. It's it, You definitely see skipped frames. So we're going to use a sophisticated method inside of DaVinci Resolve in order to resolve that issue. So I'm just going to go ahead and select the footage and in the inspector here you can see optical flow. We're going to set the retime process to optical flow and motion estimation we're going to set to speed warp. So speed warp will actually uh, analyze the motion in the image and create motion vectors. Well actually optical flow does that but the motion estimation is just a bit more sophisticated and it's going to attempt to create frames that don't exist in between those 30 F, the, the frames in 30 FPS footage. So it's actually going to generate a 24 FPS video for you. Now, of course, there's no free lunch here. There are some occasional little glitches. Like, for example, if you look at, say, uh, this right here. See? See that right there? Now, again, it's very minor. It only appears on things like this. See the, see the line there? That's due to the motion estimation algorithm. It's not perfect, but aside from the occasional artifact like that, it is, it's not going to be noticeable because we're about to blur, motion blur this anyway. Now DaVinci Resolve is going to be very slow. So if you try to play this back in real time, it doesn't matter what graphics card you're using, it's going to be slow. I'm using an RTX 3070 here and it's definitely using most of the dedicated graphics memory. And we're just at 2.7K here, so if you were in 4K, uh, you're probably going to need a much more uh, significant graphics card than what I'm using. We need to go ahead and add the motion blur. Now, when I filmed this in 30 FPS, I used in, I think it was an ND64 on the drone, and that was getting me about a 120 degree shutter angle roughly. So not the perfect 180 degrees, um, which is fine, it's not a big deal, because now I'm going to add that motion blur in post. There's a few ways to do it. In Resolve Studio, you have access to, uh, I'm just going to uh, make a new note here. So this node, we're going to go ahead and add motion blur, motion estimation type, better, and you can choose the range, and then you can actually choose the amount of motion blur. So if I go back to um, this right here, and we just pick randomly somewhere in the frame where there's like motion, you can see that 
if I uh, disable the effects, you can see that the motion estimated motion blur, it, it works pretty good. Resolve's motion estimated motion blur works quite good, but there is another plugin if you don't use Resolve. Um, well, actually, I do recommend Resolve for this, but um, there's a plugin that's actually a little bit better than Resolve's motion blur, and it's called, um, let me go ahead and set this node here, and it's called Real Smart Motion Blur. And all I'm going to do is just use GPU, select Use GPU On, and then set the sensitivity to 100 so it looks lo uh, you know, more in the frame for potential motion vectors, right? It's going to try to uh, look around on each pixel like a bigger search radius to find what it may think it's, you know, that was moving in the previous frame. So it will take longer to process this, but we're going to set, set the sensitivity to 100. Blur amount, uh, 0.5 is a good start. You can always increase it and then just use GPU on. Now this is a little bit more sophisticated than Resolve's uh, built-in motion blur. Y you're not going to notice it on a simple shot like this, but when it's a more uh, complex shot, I've noticed that it does, this is a much better algorithm. Now this plugin is around $100, so obviously you, you got to buy it and it's not, um, it doesn't come with DaVinci Resolve Studio, but to me it's worth the more accurate processing here. So anyway, now let me go ahead and we basically have uh, the effect has been created. We've converted our 30 FPS footage to a believable 24 FPS uh, conversion using DaVinci Resolve's retiming speed warp motion estimation and the retime process set to optical flow. So that's going to actually create frames or interpret frames that don't exist. It's going to create them and it's quite believable. So that will remove all the jitteriness and then I added the motion blur to complete that 180 degree shutter angle look or get really close to it. So now I'm just going to go and throw a quick color corrective grade on this with one of my custom LUTs that I created with a DSC Labs Chroma Match Pro color chart. So I'm just going to use a D-Log uh, midpoint version 3. And let's see, let me go and create a node prior to the LUT. I'm just going to go ahead and change my temperature to maybe negative 50, 10, it's going to be about negative 0.5. And Maybe my shadow can be lowered a little bit. There we go. And then highlights will reduce these a little bit. And then over here I'm going to add a... So this was in D-Log space. And then over here we're in Rec 709 space. I'm just going to increase the contrast by about 1.1. And that's pretty much it for our basic gray. Just so that we can get rid of that D-Log look and make it a bit more of that Rec 709. And then I'm just going to go ahead. And so we got the motion blur here. Now we can also sharpen this footage. So I'm just going to go ahead and sharpen it in the uh, luminance channel. So I'm going to hit Alt-Y to create a few more nodes. And I'm going to also hit Alt-S over here. We're going to go into OpenFX. And I'm going to just throw a color space transform on that one. And a color space transform on this one. We're going to convert the footage. We're going to actually convert it to lab. So there we go, lab. And then over here, we're going to have uh, input color space is going to be lab. So we're going to convert it back to... Uh, the standard color space that we're using in, uh, in DaVinci Resolve. So we're going to go ahead and affect the uh, luminance only on our sharpening. So I'm just going to add a little bit of sharpening there. We're going to keep it real simple. Um, you can also add the contrast pop effect. So maybe you can add another node here. Or you can hold down Shift and Control and swap these two nodes and add the contrast pop here. And then I will sometimes say 0 0.05 and 0 0.05 is a good start for that. Um, so you can you know, throw different levels of uh, sharpening on there, but we're going to keep this real simple. Um, so what we've done is we've affected shadows and highlights as well as tint and temperature in log space. We've added our corrective LUT and then I have increased contrast on Rec 709 space and then I have converted to lab color so that I can gain access to the luminance channel here and I've added a little bit of sharpening. And then I've converted back from lab to the color space that we're using to actually, I think it's a Rec 709 Gamma 2.4. And then over here, I've added my real smart motion blur, right? And maybe at the very end or before, or actually at the very end after that, I can toss on a glow effect. So we'll toss that on. We'll go and set it to screen. We'll set this to glow alone. Bring it to there. Bring the brightness down. And spread it down to like this go over here. Actually, let's go right here. Just like this. And this can create a very 
sort of um it's a nice subtle effect but it just creates that highlight glow it's just something i like to do it's it's a pleasant effect it's not necessary so as you can see before and after now uh what we can do is uh we'll use davinci resolves render cache feature to actually prepare this uh, to, for rendering so we'll go to file project settings and go to color i'm sorry uh master settings here and i'm going to select these two settings bring this down to five and then render cache format dnx hr444 chroma subsampling hcr so we're not going to be clipping anything and then that is really about it for the render cache so i'm just going to right click the footage go to render cache color output and then go to playback render cache user and then if i press z so we can uh, frame in on the timeline Resolve is going to go ahead and use the graphics card as well as your processor. So once the clip is loaded into memory and DaVinci Resolve has had some time to think about it, you'll see that uh, GPU utilization will go up. And this is the blue line and that is the render cache that has been completed and you can see the red area is the render cache that is not completed. And this will take a little bit of time but you can see GPU utilization is around 80% which is good. CPU utilization it depends on the clip. Um, but right now it's around 10%, but it could very well go up to 60% or whatever. It depends on uh, the source clip and your effects as well. So anyway, this will take a few minutes, but once the render cache is complete, we can then scrub through it in DaVinci Resolve and play it back. And we can also go ahead and go to the delivery page to render this out. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you how that's done. So the render cache is complete. Now, there are different ways of converting 30 FPS to 24 FPS. Of course, one method is to slow it down by 20%. But this tutorial, I have been focusing on showing you how to actually keep that, that actual time. So anyway, I'm going to go to the delivery page. And all I have to do is, we're going to keep it simple. We'll just use H.264 native. The reason why I don't use H.265 is because, it, uh, at least in Resolve, it has more noise reduction. And I actually like uh, the H.264 codec a little bit better for this. So we're just going to use render cached images. And there's no audio. It doesn't matter. We're going to go ahead and save it. So we'll go to here. Here, and we're just going to save it over to 24 FPS cinematic which I've already done and just remember to use render cache images is how you would do that so you just add it to the queue and then you would just choose render all okay so now we're going to take this 30 FPS clip that has been converted to 24 FPS which is on this timeline here we're going to put it onto a 30 FPS timeline and we're going to put it at a 16 by 9 aspect ratio so we're going to remove these uh, you can say the cinematic bars so I'm going to just uh, go to copy this clip Go to Media Pool, press Control N for a new timeline. I'm just going to verify that my frame rate is going to be 30 FPS. We're going to go for a 3840 by 2160 UHD spatial resolution. I know I can get away with it because um, I I'm not doing any really crazy stuff on this time. And I'm just going to go ahead and go to Retime and Scaling on that clip and go to Speed Warp and turn that off to Project Settings. And Retime Process is going to be to Project Settings. I'm going to disable the render cache right now for the moment. And we're going to let Resolve think about this and bring the clip up. All right, so now we're at uh, 30 FPS and we've removed the motion estimation. We've removed the read time process. We don't need any of that because now we're reading a 30 FPS clip on a 30 FPS timeline. So there's going to be no jittering. We're going to go ahead and remove the zoom there as well. And reset, well, we'll reset the position and the zoom. So we'll clear all those keyframes out. And now, if I just simply play it back, I can play it back. Um, almost in real time. Then we're going to remove the motion blur as well. We're not going to need it here. So I'm going to go ahead and disable that node there. You can just press Control D as well to do that to toggle the node on or off. Uh, let me go here to the color page and put it in full screen. So now we have a clip that's being played at 30, 30 FPS. So now we're more in the corporate video type shot. And again, this is the way the source shot was. Again, if you look at the um, D log footage, you can see my color grade. It's a very simple corrective grade there but you can see that the footage is now being played back and it's a native 30 FPS on a 30 FPS timeline so you can then use this footage for the client if you know that's what you're doing and then you can also always uh, convert it over to the 24 FPS if you're trying to go for the cinematic look so that's what this video was about showing you that it is definitely possible to convert 30 FPS to 24 FPS to do it properly uh, meaning that you're not just slowing down the footage or you know, putting it on a timeline and hoping for the best. You're literally using uh, the features here in Resolve, the uh, retiming process and the motion estimation to actually have Resolve attempt to create frames that don't exist. And 
the results are quite good. They're not perfect, but they are pretty good and depending on your uh, needs, they can be very, very adequate and at least for me they are. So I hope you found this useful and thanks for watching.